Hello and welcome to my 11.3D tutorial. In this tutorial, it's kind of like object properties extended. When I teach you how to color sphere, how to not color sphere, sorry, apply texture to a sphere, and do other things like that. And yeah, so let's get started here. As you can see, I have a blank program except a sphere that's positioned five degrees on the z-axis and scaled to its normal size. And you'll see why I why I need that later and the first command I want to teach you is the wireframe command. To use the wireframe command just type the wire wireframe and then the object that you want to use. And what wireframe does is it basically shows you the x-ray of the object and the x-ray of the object with its segments. As you can see here I have a 32 segment sphere. And if we run this program you'll see that the sphere has lots and lots and lots of segments. And if I just delete that 32 in there and put 8, sorry, 8, and I run that program, and by the way, to run a program, there's a shortcut, just press F5, and we have, after that, this kind of sphere, which has much less segments. And if we just, if we just, like, delete that wireframe code, we just have our original sphere. Nothing too special about it. Run that. And there we go, our original sphere. All right, so, and the second command that I want to teach you is entity order. And to, for you to better understand that, I'll just create an example. I'll create another sphere. And I will position it exactly one degrees, one degree, sorry, to the right of our original other of our other sphere and I probably want to make the variable name different and just to show you a difference I have to color both spheres show you a difference in what I will show you and you'll understand that just as soon I'll just color this red and our I'll, I'll, I'll color our original sphere blue there we go and now if I run this program, you see that those spheres, they overlap in a kind of nasty way, and if you want one of these spheres to be on top of the other, so one will be kind of behind the other sphere, use the entity order command. Now what the entity order command does is it specifies if one object is behind one another, and if another object is in front of another. Now to do this, we just write entity order, sphere one, which is our red sphere and there's either a value of negative one which means it's in front and a value of one which means it's in behind. Now if you leave this at one you'll see that the red sphere is behind. And here we go. The red sphere is behind the blue sphere. And if we put it at negative one, however, the red sphere will be in front of the blue sphere. Run that again. There we go, just as I told you. That was a really quick command. Now, right now I'll teach you something really interesting, and that really interesting part will be our, will texture our sphere with a texture that I'll show you how to make. And, yeah, so for now, and apply to your sphere, of course, or object. So for now, just minimize that, go to your start menu, run, and run CMD, which is command prompt. Now, when you're in command prompt, it's just a window to help you navigate through programs. If you know this, you're lucky. If you don't, well, sorry, just type what I'm going to type. Just type MS Paint, which is, if some of you guessed, Microsoft Paint. So after that, just close your window, and here we have our Microsoft Paint. And... All I'm going to do is create a quick texture of about this size. You can make it any size you want. I'm just going to make it this size a bit. No, uh, yeah, that'll do. So first, I'm just going to click on the Fill tool and fill it with orange, I guess. Just something like that. I'm actually forced sometimes to make my own graphics. So that's why how I actually test out my games. Uh, yeah. So... <clears throat> yeah, because usually my friends make my graphics for me. I'm not a graphics artist of any kind, so I'm just going to show you how to do this really quickly. And we will want to go to our pencil mode, and let's now draw in black. Let's just draw some kind of crazy 
pencil lines, I guess. Something. Oh, you'll probably want to make take more time on yours. I'm just going to make a texture to show you what it does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so now that I have my badly drawn texture, take more time on yours, I will just go to File, and I will save it in our Project 12 folder. Now, if you remember clearly, our Project 12 folder was, I uh, made it on our desktop, and it contains all our program stuff and all that. Just navigate to that and save it as Beer Texture. Sorry. Texture. One. There we go. Save that. And really, any BMP will... Oh, yeah. Wow, I'm an idiot. Wait, one sec. Well, actually, BMP files, they process better. Sphere Texture BMP. They process better, so just choose 24-bit map right here. They process better in Blitz 3D, BMP files. So make sure to save it as BMP file. So it's Sphere Texture 2. Got it. And right now, let's just minimize that and go back to our Blitz 3D IDE here. And, yeah. So let's make our texture. And the way we do that is text equals create. No, I mean not create, sorry. Load texture. And make sure these files are in the same folder. And I'll just, to make sure uh, the texture and our uh, Blitz 3D file, it's untitled, so let's just save it again in our Project 12 folder. File. Save as Project 12, and let's make it uh, YouTube Tutorial. There we go, just save that as uh, some kind of random name, but make sure it's in the Project 12 folder. And text equals load, te text equals load texture uh, Sphere Texture 2. And now let's apply that texture to our sphere by just doing a simple command entity Texture Sphere, comma, text. And text is our texture, so now, now if we run this program, uh, it says texture does not exist. Hmm. Oh, yeah, right, dot .bmp, always include extensions. There we go, bmp, not bmo, if I can spell that correctly. All right, so if we run this program, still texture does not exist. Let's check out the problem here. Oh, wait, wait, we saved it as sphere texture bmp, dot .bmp, sorry. And make sure you remember your names of the files you saved. Run it, please. Yes. Thank you. There we go. We have our badly made texture wrapped around a sphere. And in the next part two of this tutorial, I will teach you how to uh, make a, how to rotate your sphere, some rotate commands, and actually how to display text on your sphere, which is pretty cool too, in part two of this tutorial. So thanks for watching, and see you in part two.